Hello and welcome to another video by Martin, ELT Experiences. Today in this video we're going to be looking at the pre-interview task for the CELTA course. Last week I looked at the interview and how best to um, tackle the interview for the CELTA course. But this week we're just going to go step back and before that interview task we're going to be looking at uh, the pre-interview task and it's very common for CELTA centres around the world to send out a pre-interview uh, task for you to complete and it's just to assess whether you're committed enough to undertake such a, a, an intense course. Anyway, so I hope you find the video useful and if you do please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you haven't and um, whilst you're at it hit the no notification bell and this will notify you when I have a new video up. And before I start, I'd like to say a huge thanks to everybody who has subscribed. And uh, I've hit 1,500 subscribers, so that's really, really good. Really appreciate it. And thank you, thank you ever so much. Anyway, without further ado, let's start with the pre-interview task. And before we look at a particular task and go through it together, what I want to do is just a review a couple of things that the pre-interview task may include. Okay, so for the CELTA course pre-interview task, there's usually a couple of things that are covered, okay? And part one is language, and within language we've got uh, section A, which includes grammar, and we have section B, which includes vocabulary. In part two, they usually focus on pronunciation. Okay. And uh, it's usually just very, very light. It's not something very heavy and you don't need to know an awful lot about pronunciation. Part three looks at approaches to teaching and learning. In section C, we've got language and context. And we'll look at this in a bit more detail in a bit later. And that's about it. So there's three sections. Section A, grammar. Section B, vocabulary. Uh, section C, language and context. Okay. Now, let's go through uh, a pre-interview task for the CELTA course. And I've got this from uh, the British Council. It's, uh, uh, it's available online, so you can gain access to it. I'll give you a link in the comments in the description below, so you can have a look at it whilst we go through it together. So in the following sentences, correct the error if you think there is one, name the tense of the verb if you can, and comment briefly on the meaning of the tense and how, and how, hmm, looks unfinished there, but okay. Okay, so for example, they have an example just below. I read a book at the moment. Okay. So first part, A, you have to correct it. So I'm reading a book at the moment. B, name in the correct tense. It's present continuous. It's also known as present, present progressive. Uh, part C, you have to describe the particular tense and how it serves. Okay, so here it's used to express the idea of an action taking place at the moment of speaking now. Okay, so present continuous. Okay, we have the first one. She is getting up at six o'clock every day. So we have to correct it. She gets up at six o'clock every day. It is present simple. And it's used here to describe a habit or a function that people do uh, every day. And it's the same habit in the past, the present, and will continue in the future. So that's present simple. I have been to Italy two years ago. I went to Italy two years ago. Past simple. And it's used here to describe a function which has finished in the past and is no longer relevant. And the third one, we have a role play between two people. Person A, can you come for a drink tonight? Person B, sorry, I will go to see Hamlet and the National Theatre. 
So the error is in part B. You just have to correct it to, sorry, I'm going to see Hamlet at the National Theatre. So here we're looking at uh, going to forms and it's a future form and it's used to indicate a pre-planned event that you've already organised, whereas I will is something that you decide spontaneously. Uh, number four, when I got to the station, I realised I left the tickets at home. OK, so when I got to the station, I had realised I left the tickets at home. That's a correct form. And it's past perfect. I had realised. And it's to indicate um, something that occurred in the past before a particular event. So um, you arrive at the station and you had realised that you left the tickets at home. OK, um, so that's part four. Uh, number five, uh, how would you explain the difference in meaning to a foreigner between these two examples. He's been to Bermuda and he's gone to Bermuda. OK, so I've not seen this yet. I'm just going through it with you. Uh, my take on it, he's been to Bermuda um, means he's visited and he's returned from Bermuda. OK, um, and he's gone to Bermuda indicates that he's visited and he's not yet returned. And for me, I would explain the difference by drawing on the whiteboard. Um, and I would indicate the two sentences. And on the whiteboard, I would draw, you know, he's been to Bermuda, so a flight there and a flight back. And he's gone to Bermuda, just a flight there. And then no flight back, maybe across on the arrow back. And that's how I would explain the difference. So in vocabulary here in this task, you're asked to explain the difference between particular words. So like rob and steal. So you rob a bank, but you steal money. OK, so you could rob a people or a place and you steal money or an object. OK, so um, the first one we have borrow and lend. Um, so to borrow means you receive money and you have to pay that money back. And if you lend, you give money and you expect someone to pay you back. Thin and skinny. Oh, great. OK, now <laughs> I would have to have a look at a vocabulary book very quickly to check. And obviously, if you're in a classroom and someone says, oh, teacher, what's the difference between thin and skinny? Um, I would have to think and just say, OK, give me a moment. I'm just going to double check because I'm not sure. But my guess is thin means. Well, I'm not going to guess that's that's a bad teacher. I'm going to go and get a dictionary and just double check the meaning. A few moments later. OK, so I've got my best book when it comes down to vocabulary and we've got thin and skinny so let's have a look at thin and here it is have an opposite of size close together okay um, lacking strength or confidence uh, la, 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 la. not having much flesh on the body so Flynn not having much flesh on the body let's have a look at skinny skinny very thin Okay, all right, very thin, there we go. So, thin means not having much flesh on the body and skinny means very thin. I've learned something today and if you're stuck with this particular activity with regards to vocabulary, just like I was, have a look in the dictionary if you're doing the pre-interview task, it will help you. Right, number three, win and beat. OK, so you can win a match or uh, something like that, and you can beat a person. OK, so that's the main difference. So, uh, uh, you know, we won a game of football or we beat Manchester United or something like that, you know. OK, now pronunciation. And here it says mark the stress on the words below by highlighting the syllable, for example, hospital and understand, 
Okay, highlighting the syllable. So mark the stress on the words below by highlighting the syllable. Hospital. Understand. Hmm. Understand. No. Mark the stress on the words below by highlighting the syllable. Understand. Understand. Oh, well, OK. Anyway, I'm not going to get too worked up around this example. But number one, allow. OK, so here you can either, to check the syllable, the, the stress of the particular word, you can clap it. The louder the clap, the stress is best on that syllable. I, you know, I, I don't know how to explain it. So, for example, allow. The stress is on the higher part. Allow, so the O, yeah? Allow. So the, the stronger the clap, the bigger the, the stress, okay? So number two, um, so try and guess the stress in this one. Prediction. So it's the DIC, yeah? So the I, so you just highlight that DIC part. Uh, next one, controversial, and it's the VER, that's where we have the stress. Uh, photograph, 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 no, photograph, yeah, photograph. Okay, next one, oh, classic one, this one, photographic, photographic. Photographer. Okay, now you can hear it. Photographer. Number seven, prefer. Prefer. Number eight. Oh, so we're working at word families here. We've got preference now. Preference. So two syllables. Preference. Okay. Ah, now we've got record as a noun and record as a verb. Now, if you're not sure and you're stuck, again, have a look at the dictionary because this will help you and it will actually indicate where the stress is on the words. So if we go to record, okay, and we've got record, record. Okay, two forms. We've got record and we've got Record and record. Okay, and um, if you have a look, okay, um, we've got record, which is a noun, and that's number nine. Record, record, and the stress is on the RE. And the verb, the verb form, record, record, and the verb, uh, the stress is on the CORD form. OK, so just like before, if you're unsure of particular words, similar words, if you're unsure of the pronunciation, whether it's a noun or a verb form, because it can actually be a bit confusing, check the dictionary and it will indicate on the dictionary where the stress is. And I'll show you. OK, the third part to this was the approaches to teach and learning. And in here you need Write this in continuous prose, please. Okay, so think of two different learning experiences in your life, one of which was successful and one which was not, and list three main factors in each case which made the experience successful or unsuccessful. So write this in continuous prose. Okay, so obviously you'll need to spend a bit of time about this. Now, just like our last video, when it came to thinking of an influential teacher or a successful lesson that was taught uh, that you received, have a think about it. And in this case, in this essay, have a think about things such as the classroom, the teacher. Remember, the teacher's really important with this pre-interview task and why the teacher really was uh, successful for you. Um, Think of engagement, think of uh, teaching style, think of um, 
you know, how the teacher went above and beyond with regards to delivering the lesson so that you could understand. So maybe think about a situation where you had a difficulty understanding something, but the teacher actually helped you and you understood it at, by the end of the lesson. So that would be a really good example, okay? That's one thing. Another thing for unsuccessful experiences, okay, so this time have a think about something that didn't go particularly well with regards to a lesson that you received and think about why. So maybe think about, I don't know, the, the learning environment, okay? So how was the environment? How were the other students in the classroom? Uh, how did the teacher deal with the other students? Um, and try and focus on what would you do differently as well? You know, what did you learn from that? Because it's okay to cr critique a particular um, lesson which was unsuccessful, but think about how you would improve it for yourself, yeah? And this would actually help you because it shows that you're reflective, which is very important. It shows that you consider things and it also demonstrates that you're willing to um, put yourself in the position of the teacher when you were a student as well. Now, the, um, I would also urge you to not be too negative about the teacher, not be too negative about what the subject was, okay? Um, but try and balance the critique itself and why it was unsuccessful. So you could say, you could say, for example, the teacher was very helpful, but it was beyond my capability or capacity to understand it. And I needed further study by myself to understand it. Or you could say the classroom environment was a bit too distractive uh, and the teacher was trying to manage the class as much as possible, but was unable to deliver what he or she wanted. Um, and then you can consider about how you would do things differently. Okay, so, so there's that. Now, with language in context, um, part C, you have to have a look at different functions, okay? We've got an example, so look at the exchange below. Would you like to come to the cinema tonight? So that's an invitation you're inviting. Oh yes, I'd love to. And then you accept the invitation. Okay, um, we can call these different labels like inviting, accepting an invitation, and these are functions, okay? So have a look at the dialogue and label the function of each utterance and put your answer on the column on the right, okay? Now, I've not seen this, I'm just going through it with you as well, and hopefully this will help you, okay? So, hey Bob, attracting attention, yeah? So you could say, accepting attention, I, I don't know, there's, I, I'm not sure, uh, you know, you go, yeah? Um, questioning, give me a hand with a suitcase, will you? Inviting, um, requesting, um, help. Sorry, but Jenny's waiting for me declining assistance okay never mind agreement or something like that so there's there's no particular way of defining the function there's no uh, explanation or uh, you know there's no label that they're providing you so you've got to come up with your own labels okay um and that sort of thing okay so this dialogue is a very informal one between two speakers you know like friends and you have to write a dialogue, uh, dialogue in the space below on the same topic, using the same functions between two people who don't know each other. Okay, so this is interesting. So now what you're looking at is you're looking at um, changing the language to suit the function. So something from very informal to formal. So you could say, um, hey, Bob, to, oh, um, good morning or good afternoon or uh, how do you do, uh, my name's Bob or something like that, yeah, uh, you know, uh, hey Bob, I, you know, you can change it into something very, very formal, okay, and so if they don't know each other, okay, you could say, uh, 
hello, good afternoon, my name is blah blah. Uh, what's your name? Oh, my name is Bob, nice to meet you. Yeah, pleasure to meet you. Um, would you be able at all to help me with this suitcase? Possibly. Huh. Yeah, very convoluted. Or uh, if at all possible, would you be able to help me with this suitcase? Um, and then you can say, sorry, okay, so make it more polite. I'm incredibly sorry, but my wife is waiting for me downstairs or something like that. Um, and then the next week you can say, okay, well, um, I completely understand. I'm very sorry uh, to take your time. Uh, don't worry about it or something like that. So you've got to change you change it from very formal to in uh, so, sorry change it from informal to very formal okay and that's just indicating to uh, the interviewers that you're aware of uh, the functions of the language and how it can change regarding um, you know uh, two people who know each other very well to two people who don't know you very, uh, don't know each other very very well Okay, so that, that's that. Uh, number two, how would you try to get across the meaning of the phrase, would you like, ma, 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 as in, would you like a coffee to a group of beginners? Okay, so you've got some beginners. Um, and how would you describe this meaning to beginners? Okay, so with beginners, they don't have any prior vocabulary. So I would show pictures first of all. So you could say coffee, ice cream, um, tea, banana, orange, cake, which I'm going to have soon. And then drill that. And then would you like a coffee? Yes or no? And then drill this. Would you like would you like and show the different flashcards maybe or objects banana orange cake coffee tea etc and then provide the answer yes i yes i would no i wouldn't yes i would no i wouldn't and then say to someone would you like a coffee if they go yes i would you give them the flashcard and they pretend to drink the coffee and you could demonstrate it and that's how i would get the meaning across with would you like okay okay so uh, please remember that you may be asked to deal with the points discussed in this task at greater depth in the interview okay so you're going to go through this before the interview and i would um, urge you to take your time because they're going to bring this up during the interview, of course. We hope that having done this task, you have a clearer idea of the three factors involved in being an effective language teacher. Successful management of people, a clear understanding of the language you are teaching, and the ability to put this understanding to practical use in the classroom. Okay, so that it's a really, really good activity to do to get you in the frame of mind of thinking as an English language teacher, okay? So, first ones first. Get a really good vocabulary book, yeah? Now, I get my students to get this book as well, and it's the Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary. There's the Cambridge one, which I've also got, I think, but it's a really, really useful book. And as you can see, um, it used to belong to my wife. Um, and we both use it. She's put sellotape all over it and it is um, still standing the test of time. She's had it for about 20 years and it's a really, really useful book. It, and uh, oh, there's some money in it. What have we got here? 100 Hong Kong dollars. Wow, I didn't know my wife kept money in the dictionary. Maybe I need to look more often. Okay, so get an Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary. This will help you with the vocabulary section of the book. Another book that I recommend that you purchase before you do the pre-interview task is the English Grammar and Use book. And this has all the um, activities 
relate to the grammar above in the activity and it will help you name the functions or the grammar forms uh, that we've done at the beginning of the video. So this one is really, really useful. When it comes to the language and context, I suppose you could look at two, two books to help you. You've got the Practical English um, Usage, which is really, really useful. Okay, and this will help you uh, label the different functions. And the second book that I recommend, particularly for the grammar as well, again, as well as the uh, various other areas in the pre-interview task, is The Grammar for English Language Teachers um, uh, by Martin Parrott. Okay, good first name, just like me, Martin. Okay, so those are the four books that I would recommend for the pre-interview task. And these books will also help you during the CELTA course. So it's not a wasted investment. It's really, really useful to help you um, get the most out of your course um, before, during, and even after as well, because I, I look at these um, even now. Okay, so these four books. Now, I hope you found this you know, running through the pre-interview task with you, really useful. Um, I hope, you know, if you've got any questions with regards to the pre-interview task, don't hesitate to comment below. I'll try and answer to the best of my ability. And again, I'm sure if you've got a question about your pre-interview task, someone below, you know, one of the subscribers can help you as well. So, um, yeah, give this video a thumbs up. Thanks ever so much for watching. Really appreciate it, and I'll see you next Tuesday with another Teachers Tuesday video. So, um, and yeah, if you've got any requests for a future video, again, comment below. I'm all ears, and uh, I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.